Hey everybody, it's Travis Weller. Thank you for joining me for Season 2 of the 2-Minute Clinic. In today's episode, I will be discussing and sharing some of the perspective from my research on the impact of COVID-19 as it relates to student recruitment and retention in elementary and middle school bands. As my son was finishing his first year in elementary band in the spring of 2020, I was acutely aware that this pandemic could present significant challenges for band directors at all levels over the next six years. Within my study, I sought to examine the attrition levels in elementary and junior high and middle school band programs. I also wanted to identify successful strategies for recruitment, retention, and re-enrollment of band students in elementary and middle school that directors were putting into place. Part one of the survey collected basic demographic information, including self-reporting for student initial enrollment and retention over the past two years. Participant directors were also invited to contribute to part two of the survey, which included several open-ended questions. 31 elementary directors and 60 junior high and middle school directors participated. While higher participation would have made the results more reliable and be able to be generalized to the population of band directors and band programs, I am very thankful to the directors who took time to share information and their perspectives. With that in mind, I do caution directors about transferring the data points of this study to their own teaching contexts. Of particular interest within the study and the results that we all should consider are the ideas and strategies about recruitment, retention, and re-recruitment that have been shared. Thirty-one elementary band directors participated in this study, all of whom identified as Caucasian white ethnicity. Eighteen directors identified as cisgender male and thirteen identified as cisgender female. The average level of experience in teaching was 14.7 years. Pennsylvania was the most represented state in the study with 22 participants, or 71% of the population. The nine remaining directors were from six other states. Prior to the 2020-21 school year, band directors on average in this study recruited 45% of students from the grade in which students could enroll in their school band program for the first time. This is roughly 58 of 128 students on average per grade level. At the start of the 2020-21 school year, band directors in this study recruited on average only 26% of the students from the grade in which students could initially enroll. This was 35 of 133. The difference in recruitment levels during the 2020-21 year declined 39.7%, which was significant at the 0 .10 level. An interesting point to me is that the data indicated there was no difference in recruitment levels between programs that started in fourth grade and those who started in fifth grade. Without having greater than 30 participants in any of the subgroups, the data points should be taken with caution as they are presented and not generalized or transferred to other populations. What was true in this study among elementary band directors does not necessarily apply to your program, but hopefully it gives you some perspective on this issue in instrumental music education. On average, cisgender female directors had three more years of experience than their cisgender male counterparts. Although both groups saw a decline in enrollment of first-year band students from the previous year, directors who identified as cisgender female in this study saw more of a decline than directors who identified as cisgender male. Directors with less than 15 years of teaching experience had a better recruitment rate than directors with more teaching experience. Although both groups of directors saw a decline in first-time student enrollment, directors with less than 15 years of teaching experience saw only a 29% decline 
compared to the 40% decline seen by directors with more than 15 years of teaching experience. Directors who identified as teaching in a rural or urban context saw a 50% decline in student enrollment in band during the 2020-21 school year. Directors who self-identified as teaching in a suburban context, by contrast, fared better, seeing only a 33% decline from the previous year. Title I schools, of which there were 15 in this study, saw band enrollment rates drop by 44.2% compared with the previous year. Within this study, Title I schools and schools in rural and urban context experienced steeper enrollment drops among first-time enrolling band students. Directors in the follow-up survey group shared strategies that they were using to address recruitment over the past year. Many of the directors reported on pushing out instructional videos or digital files to students via classroom administration management platform, such as Google Classroom. Some directors also made use of putting instructional videos up on YouTube. Additionally, there was increased correspondence through these platforms in addition to personal phone calls, emails, and use of social media. Some directors chose to personalize their website to make it more appealing to students, such as using Bitemoji. Many of the directors in the follow-up survey group reported that they made multiple visits to general music classrooms or to other special classes to speak with students, and they held group meetings at recess and lunch. They asked for assistance from administration to help contacting parents and also to help secure resources to allow for maximum participation. All of this was being done while incorporating COVID-19 safety protocols for instrument sanitation and safe instrument introductions. Things like using alcohol wipes and antibacterial cleaner, use of an outdoor tent in early September for students to try out instruments. When asked about strategies that they had not tried prior to using during the 2020-21 school year, the follow-up survey group indicated use of the following items. They engaged students already enrolled to recruit other students through positive interactions. They made more individual consultations with both parents and their students through a virtual platform such as Zoom or Google Meet. Many directors made invitations for younger students to attend outdoor band rehearsals and performances within COVID-19 safety protocols. Finally, one of the other things that they used were virtual performances by older students within the program and shared them and sent them to younger or unenrolled students and their parents through email, class management platforms, and social media. 60 band directors participated in the junior high middle school portion of the study. 90% of them identified as Caucasian white in their ethnicity. African American directors represented 5% of the population. Hispanic Latinx represented 3%, and there were directors who preferred not to answer, representing 2% of the population. In terms of gender, 18 directors identified as cisgender female, 39 identified as cisgender male, and three directors preferred not to answer. The average level of experience in teaching was 24.3 years. Pennsylvania and Florida were the most represented states in the study with 24 and 20 directors, respectively, which represented 73% of the total population. The remaining 16 directors were from 12 other states. During the 2020-21 school year, band directors on average in this study saw an 8% decline in student retention from the previous year. The retention rate of junior high and middle school band students in Pennsylvania was over double that, declining by 18%. By comparison, all other states saw only a 7% decline in student retention. The majority of the 60 participant directors reported teaching in only one building in their district. Like the results from the elementary band directors, 
Exercise caution when considering the results of these subgroups. While they are larger in number, there is not sufficient stability in the data for it to be generalized or transferred to all school contexts and teaching situations. One of the subgroups examined in the study was based upon teaching assignments of the director. 60% of the participants taught more than two grade levels in their junior high or middle school setting. While directors teaching more than two grades retained a higher number of students overall, they also saw an increased decline in retention. The retention decline in the female and male director groups were virtually the same and not statistically significant. Directors with less than 15 years of experience in this study were able to retain more students than their colleagues with more years of service. Although only a modest increase, directors with less than 15 years actually saw a 2.2% increase in retention. Two school contexts that saw large negative results when it came to retention were schools located in a rural context and schools that were Title I schools. Rural schools lost almost 25.7% of students, while Title I schools lost 13.8%. 28 directors participated in the follow-up survey group. This group saw a decline in retention more than twice the average of all participant directors. The follow-up survey group's decline in retention was 17.8%, compared to the remaining directors who only saw a 3.8%. All directors in the follow-up survey group offered an open enrollment or re-recruitment aspect to their program, allowing students to enter the program after the initial enrollment date. These directors gained on average nine additional students in their band a year by using this process. Several of the ideas that came forward from the follow-up survey group involved students getting access to BAN virtually from home and setting up formats for virtual lessons that focused on individual musicianship rather than ensemble music. Many of the directors in the follow-up survey group held outdoor performances within COVID-19 safety protocols to attract and engage students and the community. Several of them mentioned adjusting their teaching pace and their progress through their band curriculum so students were comfortable to resume instruction. A number of them addressed and demonstrated these safety protocols and the research with both students and their parents. Most of them attempted to secure use of an alternative facility to spread out students, for example, holding rehearsals in an auxiliary gym, so that the ensemble experience was familiar, though socially distant. Similar to the elementary band directors, they asked for assistance from administrators, guidance counselors, to help make contact with parents and to minimize the attrition of students. When asked about strategies they used for re-recruitment of students during the 2020-21 school year, the follow-up survey group indicated use of the following. Similar to the elementary program, they engage students already enrolled to recruit their peers through positive interactions and use of social media. Others reported holding in-school concerts once school was back in person or using public performances by older groups, which included an invitation for students to speak with student leaders in the ensemble following a marching band performance. Small groups of the ensemble played at outdoor pep rallies or outdoor sporting events as a means to increase visibility of the band program to the community. One director reported being able to offer a nine-week band elective for students who did not enroll or previously dropped band in the elementary. Like the elementary band director group, many of them were using the school announcements and also making advertisements in classrooms and on bulletin boards to attract students.
some additional related research that I feel is important to share with all of you includes some, some work on early experiences in recruiting, as well as choosing an instrument, retention, and achievement gaps. As recruiting begins for many elementary band programs, there are a couple of aspects that should be reinforced by previous research. Abley suggests that familiarity and contact with a highly skilled professional musician or school partnership with a community music group could impact a student's desire to learn an instrument. As Worthy and Thompson investigated expert teaching in beginning band, they discovered several important aspects as it relates to the findings by Abelese. In their study, beginning band teachers provided technical instructions specific to each instrument and provided both positive and negative modeling on primary or secondary instruments. Providing a high quality initial experiences may be in the best interest of the students as they make their instrument choice. In Kuhlman's study on the influence of timbre and other factors related to instrument choice in beginning band students, results indicated that students rated family members, including extended family such as aunts and uncles and cousins, as more influential than their band teachers on their instrument choice. Further analysis confirmed Edwin Gordon's premise that family and famous artists not only influence a student's choice of instrument, but also may influence their preference for timbre. This influence could cause a student to believe they prefer the sound of an instrument for reasons other than the actual timbre. Abelis compared three studies conducted in 1978, 1993, and 2007 on gender association in students' choice of instruments. Few differences were seen in the distribution of instruments by gender, for example, girls predominantly playing flute, violin, and clarinet, while boys were playing trumpet, trombone, and percussion. Abeles did find some evidence that in band settings, girls were more likely to play non-conforming gender instruments than were boys. While some program emphasized starting with a balanced program, lack of participation or recruitment may prevent this from happening. Directors should keep in mind that students should be encouraged to choose an instrument which they will prefer the sound, their family are supportive of, and the student will be able to access. In the areas of retention, Stewart examined factors related to students' decision to continue in band. She observed those who studied privately, enjoyed participating, found band interesting and valuable, and liked performing for events outside of school were more likely to stay in band than were other students. There were no significant relationships discovered between students' decision to persist and their perception of their playing or sight reading skills. While this might seem to devalue the musical aspects of why students persist, it should serve as a perspective and balance that the reasons for students staying in band can be very complex and layered. There is room at the middle school level to challenge exceptional students who choose that path and also provide opportunities for students to enjoy the social aspect of the large ensemble and their service to the community through performance. While the former may only appeal to a smaller percentage of students, the latter cast a wider net to promote the band and help retain students. The curriculum for many band programs has been adjusted because of the ongoing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. While some directors may feel despair in their ability to help students meet certain benchmark and standards, it is not a process by which they are alone. As mentioned earlier, a community partnership could help in this regard to improve students' individual and ensemble skills. Beyond that, directors may want to consider peer-assisted tutoring as a means to help students who are struggling. This strategy also provides above-average students with an opportunity to develop leadership skills through partnering with a peer. Johnson examined the effect of peer-assisted learning in seventh grade band students. Regardless of the PAL model, all students made improvements from pre-test to post-test in musical achievement in sight reading and theory exercises. 
The results suggest that peer-assisted learning can successfully be integrated alongside teacher-led large ensemble experiences at the middle school level. This may have application to help students who are experiencing gaps in their development within your band program. The data that I discovered would indicate that rural schools and urban schools, Title I schools, and band programs with more experienced directors faced a steeper decline in recruitment and retention. More research regarding the graduating classes of 2026 through 2029 to determine the full impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on instrumental programs is needed. While some successful strategies have been shared by directors in this study, there may be other ideas among the profession that could yield positive results for band programs at the elementary and junior high middle school level. Successful band programs at all levels understand the necessity for exceptional recruitment and retention. On a surface level, programs will need to refocus and revisit these areas in the coming years to ensure that students have an opportunity to find joy, identity, belonging, and intellectual and artistic satisfaction through playing in their school band program. Thanks for listening, everybody. I know it's been a really tough year. If I can be of help to your band, band room with a virtual visit to talk with your students about why make, choosing band is the most important decision they will ever make in their life, please reach out. If you've got an idea or a strategy that have been successful, please drop it in the comments below. If you have a deeper question about the research, you can also let me know that there. This has been Travis Weller with the Two Minute Clinic. Life, love, music. We'll see you next time.